Hello, this is a brief introduction to Google Classroom. Google Classroom is the district supported platform for at home learning. To get started, simply go to classroom.google.com. You can also find this link on both student and staff links, as well as in the app launcher on the top right side of this screen. You may be required to sign in. If so, simply use your Gmail account and its password. Once you are logged in, you should see your avatar in the top right. We're going to start with the first part. We're just going to create a class up here on the top right. Click on the plus sign and simply click on create class. I'm just going to name mine test class for this demonstration. For section, you can put your period if that makes it easier. And finally, for your room, simply put your office hours that you would be available to take questions and support your students. In this example, I'm simply going to put 1 to 3 p.m. And then I'm going to have it going from Monday through Friday. After you've reviewed all your information, click on Create. Now quickly, there's a few options for your theme. I will just randomly pick this here with the laptop you'll see that it lights up with the arrow and then I'm going to select my class theme. And then you can see that changing there. You also have the option to upload a photo. That's something you can do as well. I don't have any sample photos to upload, but this is where you would do it. Simply select it from your computer or you could even drag and drop into this area. Now, as you can see, there's already quite a bit starting here. It'll give us a few options. Right here, of course, this is what's called the stream. This is going to be the main landing page where students can see both announcements and assignments. If you look on your left here, you're going to see upcoming. This is letting the students know what work is upcoming when they're in. And this would be a great way to share an announcement. So for example, I'm just going to put very excited to start Google Classroom. How is everyone doing at home? And I can post that. And you can even do something as simple as that for your first post. Then the students can start to have replies. As you can see, I have my avatar here. And if a student had made a comment, I could, for example, just share very interesting. Thanks for letting us know. And again, it works very much like anything you would see on social media. One nice feature of Google Classroom is the ability to reuse a post. This is very important for departmentalized teachers and many secondary teachers who have several classes of the same course. Simply click on this icon right here. You'll see if you hover over it, it'll say reuse post. And then it will allow you to select a class. And again, you could select the post that we just made and click reuse. If there was anything I wanted to add specifically to this class, I could do so. Also, if you'll see over here on add, we can add several different types of files. We can add things from our own Google Drive. We can simply paste a link that students could click and go to. If there's a file, a PDF you have or a PowerPoint, you could do it there. Or if there's a YouTube video that has a good lesson on it, you could click on that as well. For example, since we did math, I'm going to find a video on PEMDAS. So select the first one here, click Add. This time I'm just going to add, please take a look at this video and discuss on the stream. I'm going to click Post. And now you can see that video is embedded. It's a clickable link and your students will just click on it and they'll be able to view that video. The same is true for any of the other files, whether it's a Google Drive link, it's going to be clickable. Next, I would like to go to Classwork. Classwork is a great place for you to share assignments with your students. So again, you can see assign work to your class here. You can create assignments and questions, use topics to organize classwork, 
or order the work the way you want the students to see it. That means if you have an assignment that's more important, you can push that to the top. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to click on Create. And let's just do an assignment. So we've taken a look at how things would look on the stream, which is again the main landing page. Now we're going to move over to Classwork. You'll see here the button for create. And once again, you're going to see some options that look very familiar to what we saw before. In this case, I'm going to click assignment. The title of this assignment will be order of operations. Something from here, we have two options. If I already had something created that I wanted students to use, I could simply click on add and add the file here. The other option is to create. From here, I can click Create and Docs. From here, I want to name the assignment. I'm going to call it Order of Operations. And again, I'm going to create my instructions once more on this Google Doc. Now, what I'll need to do is get back to my tab. So I'll click back on Classwork. And there's a few options here. Since I created it in a Google Doc, students can view the file. Students can edit file. This is one that really I don't see happening much because it would give all students editing rights. And the last one is make a copy for each student. This is very popular because then each student can write their own Google Doc. It doesn't require any paper. And then they can send it back to you. So from here, we're going to click Assign. It's going to ask if we want to assign it. And again, students will see assignments in their streams immediately. Click Assign. Another thing that Google Classroom does is it creates events on your Google Calendar. This is very helpful for things like due dates for assignments. Also notice the class drive folder. This is very helpful because when I click on it, you can see that my assignments will all be saved in here. Now that we're in the classroom folder, you'll see that the test class period is named. And then we have several folders. We have order of operations and templates do not edit. Obviously, that's something you want to leave alone. That's a template of the main assignments and documents you've created. And again, you can see my original Google Doc for order of operations. I wanted to talk about a few of the other options. There's the quiz assignment. The neat thing about a quiz assignment is that it will actually be graded. I'm going to create a quiz assignment now. I'm just going to title this simple quiz. For my instructions, I'm simply going to write solve the problem. You'll see here it already comes with a blank quiz. Now locked mode on Chromebooks is a nice option for our managed devices. When you do that, the student cannot get out and go to any other tab. So in regards to this locked mode, you don't want to use this while the students are out of your classroom. This is only going to work on managed Chromebooks. So we want to uncheck this. From here, I can create my questions. Start it very simple, two times two. And there's a few options. You can choose multiple choice. You can do a short answer. In this case, I'm just going to do multiple choice. Options for three, one, four. Now, if you'll notice down here too, there's an answer key. I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to choose the correct answer. To the in this case, we're going to assign it to the test class and to all students. Leave points at 100. I'm not going to put a due date or a topic in this one, and I'll just click Assign. This would go out to all students in my class. Lastly, I want to show you people. We have two options to add students. The first option is to simply click on the person with the plus sign and invite them have a test account called Chrome Test Student. And I'm going to add that student to my Google Classroom. They'll be invited. Classroom. Now you see it shows the student as invited. The student will need to accept the invitation. The easiest way for a student to accept an invitation is to log into Google Classroom. And they will see that invitation on the main landing page. Another way to add students is to share the join code. I'm going back to stream which is again our main landing page. And you can see right here, you've got a class code. When you're in a situation where you have all the students in a room, 
you can click on this and it will make it larger so the students can see it and easily add that to the classroom. Another option is to copy and paste this code in emails or any correspondence you sent home to your students. Actually, I wanted to talk a little bit about grades. Time. At this point, we are not taking grades in Google Classroom, so this is something we will address at a later time. I'm going to go back to our stream. It's like, while Google Classroom is a very intuitive program, you may find yourself getting stuck. The very first place to go is midlandisd.net slash Google Classroom. Some of the best advice I could give with Google Classroom is just to explore. It will certainly ask you more than once if you're going to delete something important. If you are needing further assistance, we are hosting open office hours. You can view these times at midlandisd.net slash Google Classroom for live support via Google Hangouts. Thank you so very much for doing your part in supporting at-home learning for our students. We know this is a great challenge for all involved and we are very grateful for your efforts. Should you have any further questions, please feel free to email me at michael.lloyd at midlandisd.net.